I don't believe I've ever covered a build based on the Cenotaph for the Void Warlock before, and quite honestly, it went as well as I expected. I had three choices to pick when pairing Cenotaph up with a Trace Rifle. I had Runa's Effigy, where I could slam dunk on enemies while creating ammo. I could use Wave Splitter to shoot out a super powerful beam of energy that gets stronger the more orbs of power collected. Or I could go with the Hollow Denial for a much better perk pool to pick. What do you think I chose? If you said Hollow Denial, congrats. Here's a photo of a cute frog. But seriously, the Cenotaph works with any Void Trace Rifle or any Trace Rifle of your choosing, so you have room to swap in and out whatever weapon suits your needs. Hence why today's video will cover my chosen pick, but will also lean into the other exotics as well over time. I think of this as sort of a guide that then leads into the build more. Anyways, let's make a start. As Cenotaph is an easy exotic to use for any subclass, your exotic weapon could be of any choosing depending on what your playstyle is. It's pretty similar to how Felwinter's Helm works where it can be used any way you like, but you need to follow certain conditions at all times. Its exotic trait, high priority, states, it steadily reloads a portion of your equipped trace rifle magazine from reserves. When an ally defeats a marked target, a special ammo is generated for you and heavy ammo for your allies. A thing with this like Aeon Gauntlets and Action Warwick, if they had a baby, this would be the result. This works with any trace rifle you choose and can allow certain activities to where ammo is sparse to be bountiful for everyone involved, as long as you get the final kills and mark. Now as we are running a void build, I did want to colour code the build with an effective weapon that suits the following as well, but I found that void trace rifles are very limited in terms of options. Plus, I like to experiment with one build to start with before I experiment with other things. However, Hollow Denial has become my most favourite non exotic weapon to use thanks to his perk combo. As shown, I have Killing Tally and Lead from Gold, which basically allows my weapon to 1. have a damage buff active at all times, and 2. get even more ammo to drop. As to the tap, will refund my ammo used over time. Killing Tally will have a constant 30% damage buff for as long as I can maintain it. Then Left from Gold with his free ammo will allow a weapon to not run out of ammo so easily. You overall get a setup that, as long as you don't run out of ammo, will keep you and your team satisfied from start to finish. You can use Ruin's Effigy if you want, and Wave Splitter, as the build is not specifically locked down to one weapon, this is more of a recommendation than anything. For aspects and fragments, you're going to want to have Feed the Void where defeating a target with Void Ability is glad to devour. A child of your gods where upon creating a rift, you'll cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you Grenade, Melee, a cast ability and health for the user. Echo of Remnants where your Ling Grenade duration are increased. Echo of Expulsion where Void Final Blows cause targets to explode. Echo of Instability where Void Grenade kills grant volatile rounds to your Void Weapon and Echo of Persistence where Void buffs applied to you are increased. The build will focus more on being stationary rather than moving about a lot as we need to make sure we stay consistent with our shots. This is where our kit will excel the most at as having free devour and child your gods in hand will allow our kit to fully nuke enemies caught within our grass. A great example of this is using child your gods first to stun and drain enemies with their health over time and then use our grenades to net kills and then trigger Echo and Stability effect for a buffed up trace rifle. All of this in hand will allow Trace Rifle to be on par with Waste Splitter in terms of damage, but ultimately will grant us the necessary bonuses to keep the build afloat, even within the higher difficulty. Truth be told, you can be flexible with the fragments, as Echo of Undermining and Harvest are also good alternatives if you want even more bang for your buck. At the moment, this is what I would consider the best variant to choose while operating the build though. For the mods and stats, resilience at tier 10 and discipline at tier 10 will be the main key stats to invest in fully. Recovery is also important at tier 7, but has its own way of being supported without mods needed. Resilience at tier 10 will provide users a 30% damage reduction for all incoming attacks. Not much is required to improve this area except for Devour, which will be enough security to protect you from whatever you face. Your Discipline will be at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Combining this with Devourer will allow the build to effectively build up its grenade regen as we play, while also giving us a health regen. 
since we are using Fortress Grenades solely for their strength, we need to further add the following to further support his cooldown. Grenade Kickstart for a 34.4 to 45% bonus, Innovation for a 10% buff, Bomber for a 12% buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff. This will be everything you will need for the build, but you do have room to expand the build if you want to try a different grenade type of your choosing. This section covers armor charges and additional optional mods applied. Charged up times 1 will expand how many charges we can carry, while stacks and stacks makes it so that each orb of power collected will be 2. After that, having the harmonic siphon and powerful attraction mod will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate and collecting them as well. Lastly, having heavy ammo, a special ammo finder, reserves, and scavenger mods is 100% needed for the build in mind. For weapons, as we have covered the trace rifle we really want, these weapons now will be supporting the build in their own way. Buzzard Adept with overflow and kinetic tremors, and this is a common weapon I tend to pick for those sort of builds because of how flexible it generally is. Although Stasis Fusion with Chill Clip are the ideal pairing for most builds, the following is better as it is a kinetic weapon, so unlimited ammo, does decent damage to all enemies it faces, and surprisingly the combo is quite powerful when you need that little boost of damage to quickly disperse larger enemies like champions. Heavy, we have the Two-Tailed Fox, with his twin tail perk that fires two rockets, one Void and one Solar. As I do have the Catalyst unlocked as well, I actually fire a free rock instead, with another one being Arc. Now, if the Galahorn wasn't in-game, I could see the Zotic being the most used rocket in-game from start to finish, and it works perfectly in the sort of build I've shown. Great against bosses and anything requiring heavy firepower, it really goes great when you pair this with Cenotaph and good teammates that make heavy as you play. We have covered the solo version of the build before, which worked out really well for locking areas down, but also being really fun and new to play with. Not only is the firepower going to be great with everything we have active on hand, but being able to use Devour freely and also create ammo for our teammates means that we can use this in Onslaught or GMs quite efficiently. With a good team that's able to work together and use heavy as often as possible, you can breeze through content easily as long as you get the final kills on marked targets. Even if the kill isn't marked for activating your special traits, a weapon of choice has clearly shown that on its own, it can deal with legend tier enemies in the onslaught as long as you keep the trigger down and keep increasing your self buff. In fact, this build is actually perfect for legend mode as you can then push the board to the absolute limit and then adjust key fragments to accommodate its weakness. For example, me using Echo of Undermining would help my weapon out more for the higher tier waves where things do get tankier. This would help me a bunch, but at the same time I can manage fine without it. This goes the same for the heavy I'm using, as using a machine gun would be better for ammo economy, but this is down to you. So yes, the build has ways to improve if the following doesn't match your style. Only downside of the build that was quite noticeable was how fast I ran out of ammo. Even though everything I have can support the build from wave 1 to 50, as difficulty does go up, ammo usage against some enemies also goes up as well. If you're lucky, special ammo drops will help cover this area, but sometimes this might not always be the case. This also brings up another issue with the build, and that is damage against bosses. Using your trace rifle on the first few waves of bosses is fine until you hit the later rounds where your weapon will feel a bit weaker. Luckily our kit is well coordinated to counter some of these issues, but it's quite important to note these early issues before playing the game. Overall the build does fantastically well in all sorts of content you have in mind, and does have room to adapt trace rifles to your liking. Just be aware that ammo can be an issue in some situations, but outside of that, it's fairly well stocked for all sorts of situations on hand. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I have more stuff like this than I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.